Hello, welcome to Journal of a Medical Intuitive. I'm your host, Dr. Jennifer Lisa Vess, Medical Intuitive, and this is episode six, looking once again at the coronavirus. We're listening to some music from the Nature Healing Society on YouTube. Uh, They have some wonderful videos where you can watch nature scenes while you listen to relaxing music. I highly recommend it for stress release in these stressful times. So I got another transmission yesterday on April 9th. And the first um, guides I heard from, I actually heard from the sun. And so the beginning of the transmission was coming from the sun And what I was shown was that there's a lot less pollution around the earth right now. And they actually, you know, the sun actually mentioned that there was fewer uh, PPIs, particles per inch of pollution. And, And one of the results of this, so there's less pollution because there are less of us humans out producing pollution and it's affecting the atmosphere in a positive way. And one of the results of that, according to the sun, is that there's more sun energy, more healing energy that's hitting the planet, which is good for the whole planet. It's good for the plants and the animals, and it's good for us. And, you know, what the sun was saying is that the sun is kind of the higher self of Mother Earth. And so the sun is an energy source for Mother Earth in the same way that we as humans have a higher self that we can access to receive energy. The earth receives energy from the sun. And so the fact that the sun is now able to send more healing energy to the earth is really good for everybody. So this is one of the positive impacts of the uh, global pandemic and quarantine. Uh, now next, I um, was shown the Earth uh, closer up, and I got to actually hear from Mother Earth. And what she was uh, showing me and telling me was that she has a lot of wounds. And she was showing me all of these kind of red gashes on the planet. And, and I was asking her, what is causing these wounds? And she said that it's mainly uh, fires and mining, like digging and pollution and and so she was showing the fires that we've that we've been uh, following for quite some time there were fires in australia and brazil and, and and she wasn't specifying any particular places but just showing lots of different fires and lots of different kind of gashes where um the earth's been dug up with all this excessive mining for uh, minerals i guess and then she was showing all of the pollution in the ocean and in the waterways and although she was pointing out all of these wounds she then said you know the greatest wound to mother earth is not any of this it's not the fires or the mining or the pollution she said the greatest wound to mother earth is caused when her children fight with one another She said all of these natural disasters, all of these um, injuries to Mother Earth could be healed if the people would stop fighting with one another. And that that's her greatest um, wound and what makes her the saddest is not what we do to Mother Earth, but what we do to each other. And that if we could stop fighting, uh, we would be able to heal all of these wounds on Mother Earth, they would all heal. Uh, now, next, I was able to talk to some of the um, spirit beings or angels that are associated with land, um, who kind of look over and take care of some of the land on the Earth. And what they were explaining to me is that throughout the planet, there are these angels or these spirits that look after different parts of the planet and they're responsible for different areas and they all work together and so although each different angel is responsible for a different territory they are all together in a type of council and they consult with one another and they're all, they all have a united vision 
they're all they're they're all seeking the same thing in terms of um, you know uh, the beneficial thriving of the plants and animals and humans and they were all excited and they had all of this energy of excitement because what they were saying is that because all of these angels are already on a united path that it's possible for us as humans to be on a united path and she's you know they said you know we tend to think of ourselves as belonging to different territories and we tend to uh, identify with those territories and to think that we have separate paths you know that France has its own path and Brazil has its own path and the United States has its own path and Nigeria has its own path and 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 so we we make plans and decisions based on our belief that our particular country or state has its own path that's unique and they said that one of the positive side effects of this pandemic is that people are beginning to see that we have one global path, that we don't have separate paths, and that we're beginning to see, oh, you're sick, I'm sick. You're quarantined, I'm quarantined. You're out of supplies, we're out of supplies. Let's work together. Let's take care of each other. And and so there's this energetic unity that's beginning to manifest on the planet as a result of this crisis. Now I asked about uh, what I was shown in the last download about the coronavirus matrix and the light grid matrix. And you know, I discussed this in the last podcast about how um, we have this coronavirus energetic matrix all over planet Earth and they, they explained that this was an outpicturing of who we are as humans And it's tied to our tendency to be bullies and to harm. And and so and they were saying how the light workers and all the people who are wanting to heal and help are um, are in their own energetic matrix, the light grid, and that these are two competing energetic matrices. And so they were showing that coronavirus matrix again, and what they were showing this time was that, you know, those tubes, the pieces of the coronavirus that stick out from the circular spherical center, those tubes, they were showing how all of these souls were coming out of those tubes. And so that was showing that all of these people are dying on the planet. And energetically what that means is that their souls are being ejected from this physical plane and going into another realm. And you can actually see them coming out of the tubes of the coronavirus. And they were saying that, you know, there's a whole lot of people dying and that this is a monumental event because of this acceleration of souls um, exiting. And so they said, you know, people are always dying and there are lots of people dying all the time all over the planet. And they said, but however, there are there are these events like this, which are different from the way people usually die, because they are situations where there's a sudden acceleration, where there's a whole lot of souls dying of the same thing uh, very suddenly kind of suddenly and without a lot of warning and it's a certain kind of death when you die in a very large group and you die all at once so this happens with wars it happens with genocide it happens with plagues and natural disasters where a whole lot of people die together uh, kind of unexpectedly and so this is happening and they said that it's happening Um, all over the planet and so while it may appear that uh, some countries are worse off than other countries uh, what they said is that if you look at the whole planet um, there's a symmetry and there's uh, the same amount of people who are dying from this disease throughout the planet and it's not by country but by if you look at region they said if you divide the 
the planet up into 12 regions, um, there's an equal number of people passing from each region. And so it's uh, symmetrical. But the rates of passing vary. And so that's why sometimes in one country there are a lot more people dying, or at one city, a lot more people dying than another city. So there are changes in acceleration. But overall, um, there's an equal number of people dying uh, throughout the world, throughout the different regions. Um, So what they wanted to point out is that this does not favor, this condition does not favor a region. Um, Right now, there are countries who think that they are better off than other countries or cities that think that they are better off than other cities. And um, that does not seem to be the case, according to my guides. What they said was relevant was this whole aspect of bullying. And so this bullying energy, mean, because there's a bullying energy associated with the coronavirus, uh, those who are most vulnerable to the coronavirus are those who are most vulnerable to bullying. And so people who are oppressed, uh, members of the most oppressed populations, um, we're also seeing that they have really high rates of death from the coronavirus. And, but, they, but they pointed out that bullies are also uh, vulnerable. And so I specifically asked about the high rates of mortality among Native Americans in the United States and African Americans. They're dying uh, at disproportionately much higher rates than other groups. And how they explained it was it's because of this bullying energy of coronavirus. Those who have been bullied the most um, are most susceptible. And I asked, well, does that mean that those people who are the bullies are also most susceptible? Um, And they said, uh, yes. They, They said, well, you will see. And they didn't really want to talk about it. They said, we don't want to talk about who's going to die and who's not going to die. And, um, but I guess they did want to explain a little bit about these different rates of mortality because we have questions. So I asked, what could we do? And uh, one thing they said is that we could engage in water purification rituals. And they said, for some people, this can happen now and other people will have to wait until the quarantine is over in their region. But they recommended that we immerse ourselves in water as much as possible. That if there's rain or snow where you are, to walk in the rain and snow. If you have access to a waterway, a river, a stream, to go bathe in it. Obviously, if you're under quarantine and you're not supposed to go to the beach, do not go. But those people will have to wait until after the quarantine is over. But they said you can also um, use water at home for purification. And then after talking about the water purification, they they pointed something else interesting out. They said there's going to be a lot of rain and precipitation in the wake of this pandemic there's going to be a lot possibly some floods some of the streams and rivers might overflow and some of the shorelines might change and we are not to become alarmed about this because this is a part of the purification process that's happening right now mother earth is becoming purified and this was discussed in the last episode where all the plants and animals are getting healthy now because of the absence of the humans. Well, this is also what's happening to the water. The atmosphere is getting clean now, and the rain is cleaner, and now the waterways are going to start to clean themselves. And they said, you know, we have to trust Mother Nature knows what she's doing. We have to trust and not become alarmed if we see changes in the weather. This water 
cleansing, this water purification that's happening is going to benefit all of us. We are all going to benefit from it, either now or in the future. And finally, I asked for some guidance on the suffering, uh, especially the suffering that people are experiencing from the lockdowns and the shortages. Because we have people suffering because they're getting sick and they're dying or their family members are dying or they can't visit their family members when their family members are sick or dying or dead. But we also have people suffering just as a result of the lockdown. You know, there are people in India who are walking for hundreds of miles to try to get home. And uh, some people are dying just trying to get home to a place where they have food. And so I wanted to know, and I asked um, Mother Earth about this, and, and the angels, and what, what they said was, we have to stop fighting for resources and basic goods. And they said, there is no shortage of resources. There's only a shortage of amity, a shortage of generosity, and a shortage of sister brotherhood. They said there's a shortage not of goods, but a shortage of love. And if we can address that shortage of love, then the suffering will end because that will eliminate the forces, the competitive forces that are currently creating the shortages of goods. So we had a theme um, that kind of kept recurring in this transmission about love and about not fighting with one another. And I know that some people may feel like that doesn't sound like a treatment, like that's not a medicine. And some people are waiting for me to talk about what they can take, what's the cure. And, you know, I haven't been getting information about what's the cure for coronavirus, but I've been getting information about what we can do or what we're being called to do um, as a result of this pandemic. And what we're being called to do is to move away from the bullying energy, the victimization energy, the focus on victimizing or being victimized. And we are also being called to come together and to begin to see ourselves as one, to begin to help one another and to recognize that we are all on one global path. And this is being given as advice for how to treat this condition as a people, as a planet. Thank you. Please stay safe, stay home, take care of yourselves, and take care of the people that you can take care of. And I will talk to you again. This is Dr. Vest, Medical Intuitive, and you've been listening to Journal of a Medical Intuitive.